Hi there, and welcome to today's episode about how to raise baby chicks. My name is Mayette Van Eidert, and I am here with you every day for the next 16 weeks, showing you how to raise baby chicks from day olds until they're healthy layers. I'm also the founder of the website Pamper Chicken Mama, and we have a line of layer feeds, herbal treats for backyard chickens, and Chick Starter, which is the inspiration for this video series. Now what I thought we'd talk about today is whether or not fermented feed is good for baby chicks. So in short, yes, fermented feed is good for baby chicks. The reason why is because it has a lot of when it's done correctly. And we'll talk in a minute about what it, it looks like when it's done correctly. But when it's done correctly, it has a lot of beneficial bacterias in it that, like the apple cider vinegar, can help your chicks develop that really good gut flora that we talked about um, and avoid pasty butt, which I think we talked about in another video. So fermenting your chick starter is a little bit different than, for example, fermenting alcohol for beer, right? Basically what it boils down to is submerging your chick starter underwater for up to 70, 72 hours for the purposes of developing the beneficial bacteria. Now these wild bacteria and wild yeasts are found naturally like in the air and in nature and on food. So you don't necessarily need a starter in order to ferment chicken feed. You can do that. For example, you can use something like whey um, or you, apple cider vinegar is another really good option. But you don't actually have to do that. Really all you need to do is just make sure that the chick starter stays submerged in underwater for that 72 hour period that we talked about. I personally don't ferment chicken feed longer than that. It's not really necessary and it after 72 hours it starts to um, get a little bit trickier to make sure that it actually is full of beneficial bacteria and not harmful bacteria. So there's people out there who will ferment it for longer than that. My threshold basically for this type of fermenting is 72 hours. Now one question that you might have is, well, how do I ferment it when chick starter is basically like a crumble or a mash and it's probably going to float up? Um, the answer to that is basically you can um, use a weight. So for example, sometimes when we ferment vegetables, we we'll use like a glass weight and they come with a lot of fermenting kits. So another really good option is to put your chick starter in the water. For example, like we use like five gallon buckets or two and a half gallon buckets. You can get those at any sort of big box store. Um, but we put the feed in that and then we put a plastic bag over the top of the water and then put a plate on top of the water and that effectively acts as a weight and like it creates like a vacuum where um, the chick starter can't really necessarily float up above the water line. It is really, really important to make sure that your chick starter doesn't go above the water line. The reason why is because the beneficial bacteria that take over the process when fermenting and those are the beneficial bacteria we want for our chicks they only grow in anaerobic environments which occur underwater if the chick starter is above the water at any point there's a chance that it will develop bad bacteria that rot food or that cause mold or other issues so it's really important just to make sure that you're keeping your chick starter below the water line and you can use the ideas that I just discussed previously. Something to keep in mind with fermented chick starter is that the texture will change as the fermentation process goes on. So the harder bits of food will break down and the food will be more liquidy or, or more like a mashy type of, 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 of consistency. Um, when they're day old, chicks don't really mind that. Um, older chickens, if you try to trans transition them to fermented feeds, will sometimes have a problem with it because they don't like the texture, they don't understand the texture, they don't understand how to eat it. They're very much just used to the, the harder pellets. So if you know you want to feed your flock fermented feed throughout their entire lives, it's actually better to start as their day old and baby chicks. It is also really important to keep in mind that this is a wet food. So it is more likely to get stuck to your chicks down. Um, and when it gets stuck to their down, it makes them colder, it makes them dirty, which gives, makes it harder for them to maintain the correct temperature for their body. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're gonna feed the fermented feed, I would go with, with a feeder that is like the long chick feeders that we've talked about or the mason jar chick feeders we've talked about. And I would stick to those just to make sure it's cleaner. Now, if you find that your chicks are objecting to the texture, or if you're just not too sure about the texture yourself, one thing you can do is mix dry chick starter 
with the fermented chick starter. Your chicks will still get the same benefit, but the texture is a little bit more um, welcoming sometimes to chickens. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I will also put a link below about where you can read about more about fermented feed and exactly how to do it on my website. If you've enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and leave me a comment below. If you have a question about raising backyard chickens or baby chicks, you can also leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. Please do consider subscribing and if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to click the notification bell so you can be notified about when I upload new videos, which is every day for the next 16 weeks as I show you how to raise baby chicks from day olds until their healthy layers. Thanks for watching. Bye!